Hi, I'm Drew, and I'm an amateur model builder. I'm building a layout in my basement called the White River Line, inspired by the Frisco Railroad in the Ozarks. So in this video, I'm going to get started on a project that I've been thinking about since I started building my layout, and that is turning this servo into a switch machine to control the turnouts. It's not a unique idea. There are plenty of people out there doing this, and I've been combing through their ideas, trying to see what's going to work best for me. My goal here is to replace those $20 or so tortoise switch machines that are so popular and make it with these servos that only cost about a buck or two a piece. So I'm thinking I can save a ton of money if I can make this work. So let's jump on into it. This is the mounting bracket that I'm using. I found a number of designs on the internet, but this is the one I like the best. The thing I really liked about the design of this bracket is the ability to mount a couple of double pole single throw switches to it that are triggered by the movement of the servo. I'm trying to replicate the functionality of the popular tortoise switches as closely as possible and one of those functions is the ability to control the polarity of the frogs on the turnout. I'll get to more of that later on. With the servo and switches installed in the mounting bracket, I'm going to start working on the circuit, which I'll initially build on a breadboard. Eventually, I'll put all of this into a control panel that I've been designing, which will go on the fascia of my layout. I'll be using an Arduino to control all of these components. For those of you unfamiliar with Arduinos, they are basically a programmable circuit board, and they will be the backbone of the electronics on my layout. I'm going to need to use four pins total on the Arduino. One input and three outputs. The input is a simple momentary switch. This is the one that came with my Arduino kit. I'm still researching the ones I'll actually use on the layout. The outputs will be a couple of LEDs that will indicate the route of the turnout on the control panel and the servo. I'm going to be using an unmounted servo for now, just in case I get some unpredictable behavior. The circuit itself is pretty simple. The momentary switch connects to pin 2. The LEDs connect to pins 12 and 13. Aside from the connection to the pins, the LEDs and button only need a connection to the ground. We need a 330 ohm resistor for the LEDs so they don't burn out. The servo will need a connection to both 5 volts DC and ground. The control signal for the servo will connect to pin 9.
Now, I'm going to step you through the code I'm using. Let me qualify this by saying I'm not a professional programmer or an Arduino expert. I have some coding experience, but I'm an electronics novice. Before I start with the logic of the sketch, and a sketch is what you call the code that you upload to an Arduino, well, I, I need to set up a few things first. First, I need to load a couple of libraries. Libraries are other bits of code that make my code work much easier. Bounce is a library that will help the button perform more reliably. Servo is a library for controlling servos, which I guess makes sense. Then I'm going to create some constants that will hold the pin numbers I'm using. These values won't change as the program runs. I'm also going to create a constant holding an array. These will contain the angles that the servo arm needs to be at for the straight and divergent routes. Next, I'm going to create some variables. These are things that will change as the program runs. And I'm going to set initial values for these variables. One variable for the state of the LED that will be on when the switch is taking the straight route, and one for the divergent route. I'm going to need three variables for the servo. Its state, straight or divergent, its current position, and its target position. Its target position will be loaded from the servo angle's constant. Finally, I need to create a couple of objects that will make use of the libraries I loaded. An object is kind of like a bundle of variables that describes something used in a program. I created an object for the button named Button1, and I created an object for the servo named Servo1. Now I need to do some setup on the Arduino in this section called Setup. This is a standard part of all Arduino sketches. I attached pins 12 and 13 to the LEDs and set their initial state. I attached pin 2 to the button and set some of the parameters used by the bounce library. And I attached pin 9 to the servo and set its initial angle. Now I get to the logic in the loop section of the code. This is code that runs over and over and over again while the Arduino is on. First, I ask the button to update. One more thing about objects and programming. Not only can they hold information about a thing, in this case a button, you can also send them commands, that is, call functions. When I call this function, I'm asking the button to check and see if it's been pressed. If it has been pressed, I'm going to trigger some more action. Remember the variables at the top that hold the state of the LEDs? They remember if the LEDs are on or off, or in Arduino terms, high or low. I'm going to toggle these variables. Straight LED state equals not straight LED state. And divergent LED state equals not divergent LED state. Now I'm going to write these values to the pins on the Arduino so my LEDs change. Next I can move the servo. This code is a little clunky in my opinion, and I'll probably revise it a bit in the future, but it'll work for now. First I toggle the value of the servo state, where 0 equals straight and 1 equals divergent. Then I'll set the servo target from the constant I created. If servo state equals 0, it will set the target to the straight angle, the first value in the servo array. or if the servo state is 1, the second value in the servo angle's array. Using the while loop, I'll change the angle of the servo. While the current servo position does not equal the servo target, it will keep looping this portion of code. If the current position is less than the target, add 1 to the servo position variable. If the servo position is greater than the target, subtract one from the servo position variable. Now write that value to the servo, which moves the servo. Then delay, or pause, for 70 milliseconds. This pause will help simulate the slow movement of the tortoise switch machines, which I'm trying to replicate. 
This slow movement more closely matches the speed at which real railroad turnouts move. This section of code is just going to loop constantly until the position of the servo matches the angle I want it to be. Then it will exit the while loop until the button is pressed again. Okay, let's upload that code to the Arduino and see how it works. And that seems to be working. Now I'm going to switch out and use the mounted servo. But again, first I'm going to remove the portion of the bracket that has the switches. I'm not really sure what the angle should be on the servo, and I want to get a visual on that first. And I need to adjust the arm a little bit. and I'm going to need to tweak the angles in the Arduino sketch. I found that 5 degrees for the straight angle works well, and 40 degrees works well for the divergent. Before I get this installed on the layout, I want to solder some leads on the switch for my frog. I'm not really sure yet which is the right terminal on the switch for the positive and negative wires which will connect to my power bus. This turnout I'll be attaching this to is a right hand turnout, like this one. When I attach the wire that will move the throw bar on the turnout, you can see that it pivots in the hole in the top of the bracket. So when the servo arm is on the right, the wire will move the throw bar to the left and vice versa. When the servo arm is on the right, the throw bar is on the left, the turnout lines up with the straight run. Well, I'm going to write all this down to make sure I'm keeping this straight. Servo on the left, leads to the straight route. Servo on the right leads to the divergent route. There are three terminals on the switch. Common, normally open, and normally closed. The throw will be open when the train takes the straight route and closed on the divergent route. The wire to the frog goes on the common terminal. Now, on the switch on the layout, the straight stock rail is positive and the divergent route is negative. This means the frog needs to be negative on the straight route and positive on the divergent route. When the throw is in the normal, unthrown position, the normally closed terminal is active. That is to say, the circuit connecting the common terminal to the normally closed terminal is closed when the switch is in its normal state. Conversely, when the switch is thrown, the circuit connecting the common terminal to the normally open terminal is active. So when the terminal is in the straight position, the normally closed terminal is active, and it will need a black wire to connect to the negative terminal of the power supply. The normally open terminal, in turn, needs a red wire for the positive polarity. Let's get it on the layout and see how it does. I'll start by soldering a wire to the frog. The 
Since the top of my layout is just foam, I'm going to glue this small block of wood on the bottom with some polyurethane glue. I added a bit of tape to keep it attached as the glue cures. After letting it cure overnight, I removed the tape. I'll slip a bit of wire through the hole in the throw bar. Then I thread it through the hole in the mounting bracket. Next, with a bit of effort, I screwed the mounting bracket into the wood. I bent a small hook in the wire and slipped it through one of the holes in the arm of the servo. Then I wired everything up. Let's see how it works. Well, it isn't going as smoothly as I had hoped. It's trying to move it, but it isn't quite there. And I can hear the servo reaching its limits for torque. Well, let's see if I at least got the frog wiring right. I toggled the switch to the straight position where the frog should be negative. Then I measured the voltage between the frog and the stock rail for the divergent route which should also be negative. It should measure zero volts. It does. Now I measure the voltage between the frog and the stock rail for the straight route. 22 volts! Fantastic! I toggled the switch again. Twenty-two volts between the frog and the divergent stock rail. Yes! Well, at least I got that wired up correctly. But the actual switching of the rail still needs work. A thicker wire, different angle on the servo, a different mount. If you've got other ideas, let me know because I've got experimenting to do. But I'm on my way. Well, thank you for joining me on this first step in designing my switch machines. If you found this video interesting or helpful, you can say thanks by clicking on the like button. It really helps my channel grow. If you feel like clicking twice, the subscribe button helps even more. You can find me on Instagram and Facebook, and those links are below in the description, along with a list of the tools, supplies, and resources I use. Next time I'll be working on, well, something. I'm not quite sure. I'm headed to the Rocky Mountain Train Show tomorrow, and I'm hoping that'll provide some inspiration for my next step. Thanks for joining me, and please join me again next time as I continue modeling the White River Line.